This morning, I had the privilege of welcoming a year six class into the church for their own special Ash Wednesday service. And to warm them up a bit at the start, I asked them if they had celebrated Pancake Day and what their favourite toppings had been. Who would have thought that fruit pastels would make a good topping? <laughs> Not something I've ever tried. I wonder what you had if you enjoyed pancakes yesterday. Over at the rectory, we had PCC and pancakes. That's the meeting of our church council and sharing stories of our favourite toppings. And somebody mentioned that on holiday, they'd once been served sardines in a pancake. Now, for me, as somebody who loves savoury food, that sounds like a winner, something I should try in future years. But these year sixes were really on it because I then asked why Shrove Tuesday? Why do we have Pancake Day? And they were able to explain about using up the rich food ingredients before we enter the time of Lent, which is traditionally a time of giving things up, of living a simpler lifestyle. Uh, one of the children said that they were going to give up their favourite game on the computer so that they could focus on God instead. I wonder if you've thought about giving something up or taking something up as a reminder that nothing is more important than God. Let me just move through my slides. We have the pancake day. So this time of year starts with Shrove Tuesday. We move into Ash Wednesday, which marks the start of the season of Lent. And so today, Ash Wednesday, and you may know that traditionally the ash that will be put on your foreheads is made from the palm crosses that we had given out last year on Palm Sunday, a reminder of the crowds welcoming Jer Jesus into Jerusalem, waving their palm branches in the lead up to Easter. So there you have a picture of the crosses burning. And then this morning with the school group, we had a child come forward and with the pestle and mortar, they ground up those palm crosses into a fine ash. Then we stirred in the oil to make the mixture that will go on our foreheads. Here I have a picture of Bobby, who always helps me at the uh, school services every week. And he was the first to come forward. And as I placed the oil on his head and made the sign of the cross, I said these words, words that will be said to each one of us here later in the service. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. Ash Wednesday is, I believe, a time to face reality. There's a bit of a clue there in the word ash. Um, ash was used in the Bible um, as a sign of repentance, a sign of deep sorrow for sin. People would place ash on themselves. And I guess the word sin and repentance maybe sound a bit old fashioned today, words that are not very popular. And yet we need to acknowledge the reality of our sin today as much as ever before. Lent is a time of deep reflection on every aspect of our lives, our relationships, the things that we do that bring pain and hurt to other people, the things that we do or the things that we don't do that we should have done that hurt God. And also there's our relationship with God's world. We've had some interesting discussions at Cozy Corner, our new Wednesday warm space. Um, somebody was talking about a panorama program, talking about the cloud where so much of our tech information is stored, our photos from our phones, um, all sorts of files are backed up on there. And she was saying that on this program, they highlighted the fact that not only is it very energy intensive, um, lots of electricity is used, but also a lot of water is used to cool those machines. Perhaps it's a time during Lent for us to think about our use of tech and the impact on the world around us. Or this week, 
another Panorama programme talking about the origins and productions of our tea, some of the big brands that are used in this country, uh, highlighting sexual exploitation and abuse of power. Maybe Lent is a time to look more closely at our buying choices and the impact they have on other people. Interestingly, repentance has been in the news, certainly in Christian circles over the last recent weeks. Um, there's a college, uh, Asbury College in America, where there's been something uh, going on, something strange. People have been feeling overwhelmed by a sense of wanting to come before God with repentance. It started with a very ordinary service, nothing very special went on at all by all accounts, and people started to leave and go back to their dorms and homes. But then people started to turn around and felt compelled to go back into that chapel and to fall on their knees before God in repentance and are coming back to him. And they were released into worship as they were set free by the things that held them back. These things are just as relevant today as they were in Bible times. And I myself, challenged by that, came into the church and spent time on my knees thinking about what would it what would it be like if I let myself truly feel the sorrow that's appropriate for the sin in my life? And it was a very moving experience and one that I encourage you to consider doing yourself. So we have, let me put that up on the screen, to face the reality of sin and then also the reality of our own mortality. Those words, from dust we were made and to dust we will return. Look back to the creation of the world and God making humans and that first man, Adam. You may have heard Dave speak about how Adam's name could be roughly translated as dusty, made from the dust of the earth. And we come from that dust. We're part of the created world. And to dust we will one day return. You may have heard those words at funerals that you've been to. It's not easy, is it, to face the reality of our own mortality or the fact that those we love will one day be with us no more. But there are two other realities that I would like us to focus on because we don't just have a blob of ash put on our heads. We have the sign of the cross. And so set against the reality of sin, we have the reality of forgiveness. That story we heard of the woman caught in adultery speaks so clearly of that. Jesus said, let the one who is without sin throw the first stone. And no one could do that. All were aware of the reality of their own sin. But then Jesus says these powerful words to the woman. I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. And if you're feeling weighed down by the sin in your life, hold on to the reality of God's forgiveness, of all that was done by Christ on the cross. So the reality of forgiveness and then to set against the reality of our mortality, I would want to remind us of the reality of life after death. Again, that sign of the cross, let me make it upon my own forehead now. The sign of the cross, the reminder that Jesus died and rose again from the dead so that death would no longer have the last word. And so as we have these 40 days of preparation in the lead up, I encourage you, yes, to reflect on the reality of sin, but to hold on to, to the reality of forgiveness. Yes, to be very in touch with the reality of your own mortality, but to uh, see that in the context of the reality of life after death, a life forever spent with God and held in his love. I'm going to finish now with a prayer that I um, used with the school group this morning. Let's pray. Lord, you have commanded us to take up our cross and follow you. 
that is hard. There are many days when all we want is an easy life. We want to please ourselves and not to bother about others. We like to find the quickest way to get something done. We are not good at waiting for those who do things differently or to try to understand them. We do not spend much time praying for others instead of ourselves. Jesus, it is hard to follow you in the way that you demand. But we remember your life here on earth. What if you had taken the easy way out of every situation? What if you put your own needs first rather than serving others? What if you'd pleased yourself instead of pleasing your heavenly father? And Jesus, how can we ever think it? What if you'd refused to go to the cross because it was too hard? What if you'd never died in order to bring us close to God? Jesus, forgive us that we so easily give up in our efforts to follow you. We thank you that you've given everything for us. We bring ourselves again to you today. Please help us this week and throughout Lent to live lives worthy of your name. For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.